Hello everybody, this is Tim here again for the next part of the Snyder Cut commentary. For anybody that's been following along, we're on Chapter 4, uh, Change a Machine. <laughs> so if you want to follow along with us, you can start at Chapter 4, Change Machine, and we'll be going in 3, 2, 1, I'm pressing play now. Alright, Chapter 4, Change Machine. Here's Gordon J.K. Simmons, baby. Got my water with me. I'm actually recording this section of the commentary in the middle of the night, like outside in the vehicle. I waited pretty late. It's like, well, not too late. I mean, it's like 10 o'clock here while I'm doing this commentary. Cool Batman jump down with Ben Affleck right there. That was cool. But yeah, I waited till like 10 o'clock at night to do this next part of the commentary. Uh, I set up pretty late, to be honest. Like, uh, I set up pretty much like all night. So, I'm perfectly okay with doing um, a commentary for the next chapter section here. I'm not sure how long this one's going to be, but I guess that's going to be part of the fun. Figuring it out as we go along. Yeah, Ben Affleck's just awesome as Batman. Also, um, it's cool to see him, like, his, his art completed with him now in, like, the leader role, pretty much, while Superman's not around. Because Batman and Superman are kind of, like, the de facto leaders of the Justice League and, well, Wonder Woman. I think I remember this chapter as being the one with all the action in it. Or a, a big chunk of the action, or more action compared to the, the first three chapters. And with the flash. The Batman. The team is now underground and they're all jumping down. <laughs> Batman finding some clues. It's going to be really interesting to see how Matt Reeves does the, um, the detective style like Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. It's going to be interesting how he constructs that, uh, constructs that one. Like, I mean, how he, uh, has the, how he, um, balances the detective stuff with the action stuff. It's gonna be interesting, because he claims it's gonna be a detective story. I mean, the finishing movie may not be much, the released movie may not be much of one. Who knows until we see it. I mean, there's no way to know. But that seems to be the vibe he's going for, so far. Oh, well, we got the Parademons and Steppenwolf. He's interrogating people, which is pretty much what he did in the um, theatrical cut. But here he's like reading their minds though with that cool device. So that's pretty neat. I really like that change. Yeah, that's cool. Like the how the device can do like little mental projections and stuff. Yeah, that's neat.
It's so interesting to think about the fact that Cyborg's dad dies in this version, but he lives in the theatrical version. I, I prefer his death, like him dying. Uh, part of the reason is because this is a much better constructed and put together and, and comes off better written because of that film. So his death feels more impactful to the plot. Whereas in uh, the theatrical cut, him living is just like, well, whatever, he doesn't really do anything. I always like that kind of like backflip thing with the lasso that Wonder Woman does where she's like shooting herself up and landing on her feet. And that's like a cool shot action scene. Yeah, I mentioned this before. I like how Steppenwolf's like uh, axe actually has like a lightning to it and stuff. It's really cool. Like added animation gives it more character. Because Batman, why y'all? Batman has more like parademon action in this with him beating up parademons. That's funny, the flash like dodging stuff. It's interesting to like compare the edits of like how they edited stuff during this section of the movie and the theatrical cut with how they like edited around stuff that the flash did and all that and like took it out. I always had a problem with this. Batman's like, I get the idea of it. Batman's like getting overwhelmed, so he has to use, um, he has to resort to like bringing in the Nightcrawler and all that. It's like kind of trying to show like Batman's limitations and stuff, but at the same time, Batman getting overwhelmed by just one average Parademon is a little silly because Parademons are not very tough. And even an older Batman with all his skill and just his regular weaponry should be able to probably take a Parademon out pretty easily. I mean, like, why doesn't he just do, like, in the, like he did, like Batman does all the time in the animated shows, and just, like, throw an explosive battering with it and hit it and blow it up <laughs> at, the, at this section of the movie? He kind of does something like that in the climax when he, like, throws an explosive at one, and I'm like, well, he should have, like, truckloads of explosives. Why doesn't he just throw one at the thing? I like the gauntlet things that he has, though, that they set up uh, earlier. There, they like, like absorb energy. That's pretty cool. It would have been neater though if they could have like shot the energy like back out, kind of similar to like Wonder Woman or something. It would have been cool. I like that we're getting more like a comic, comic bookish type stuff in this new series with or this series with Batman, as compared to what will obviously be a more grounded Nolan esque type. David Fincher inspired take with um, Pattison. But yeah, I like this more comic book type, type stuff with this, but I feel like you could push it even further. I mean, not like in like silly Joel Schumacher realm or something like that, which I actually don't mind Batman Forever, as I mentioned before, as just like a silly popcorn Batman movie, a dumb one. But um, Batman and Robin is terrible. But yeah, um, a more like comic bookish type Batman, I wouldn't mind. I mean, even a more comic bookish one, I wouldn't mind than this series, is what I mean. Like, he could be, like, walking around, like, actual, like, mech suits and stuff like that, like, Iron Man style, and I really wouldn't have a problem with it. That was an awesome scene right there where Flash, like, was flying up above those people, catching the rubble and all that. Um, that was awesome. Surprised that was cut. It makes you wonder, like, why Josh Whedon had certain things cut for, like, no reason. It's like almost like he just cut certain things just because Snyder did them and he just wanted them out of there. Like a lot of stuff I can see that he wanted, he was under the two hour mandate or whatever and wanted to do a compact film to, and one that he could get closer to something that he would release. But at the same time, um, there's certain things that seem like he cut them just because Snyder did them. So it doesn't really make, it doesn't really make sense. It's just, it just makes him look stupid is what I'm saying. Like his decision making at least. I mean, just regardless of the fact of the whole, like, he was a prick thing on set or whatever. 
that's a really cool, uh, this is a really cool scene right here. Everybody's talking about this. Flash runs down there and hits the uh, sword or whatever, like Venus de Milo painting, and like causes it to fly back up to Wonder Woman. That's cool. Beautiful visual. I'm really interested to see what they do in the uh, Flash movie. Because seeing this Snyder Cut, Flash gets a lot more like cool like scenes to do with his slow motion, like you know speed travel and stuff like that, like slowing it down and stuff, Quicksilver style. I'm really interested to see like what what kind of stuff they add in the Flash movie to kind of try to kind of equal this or top it, you know, his stuff in this one. Like once you see Flash like reset time at the end of this movie in the climax, it's like, well, how are they going to top that in the um, actual Flash movie. I mean, they could find a way. It's possible. Uh, action scene-wise, or, ep or epic scale-wise, you could do it. I have a feeling that Fla uh, the Flash movie is going to have a lot of, like, dramatics, dramatic feel to it as well. Probably especially with the climax, because of the fact that he's trying to, like, change time to get his mom back and all that. There's some good drama you can have there. Ray Fisher doing a great job as Cyborg. I'll say this, like, uh, the whole Ray Fisher thing and all that, just, like, besides all that, like, some of the... I, I wish that he was still in the Flash movie. Like, I really like him here in the Snyder Cut, and I would really enjoy... I would have enjoyed seeing him in the... Um, the Flash movie with Ezra Miller, that would have been cool having him in there. Whether it even be like a supporting role or a large role, either one, I would have enjoyed seeing him in there. But at the same time, I don't really need a Cyborg movie. Like a Cyborg solo with Ray Fisher is not something I really care about. Because this movie pretty much is the Cyborg solo with Ray Fisher. I mean, what more could you, what more can you really do with Cyborg? Like his biggest story and or story type thing really is him, um, learning to accept himself and thinking he's the Frankenstein monster and all that or whatever like they kind of do here. I mean, you could uh, you could do like a story focused on or a movie focused on like how he feels now being out in the public and being a hero and how it like reflects on his life and all that and those kinds of things. And like him questioning like whether or not um, he did make the right choice by joining society as a hero and have a villain that kind of represents that or something like that. Kind of similar to like Green Goblin, William Defoe in the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. Where he's like, eventually, they will hate you. Like, no matter what, the world's going to reject you, Cyborg. I mean, you could do something like that. I guess that would work as like a Cyborg solo movie or a follow-up movie. But at the same time, Cyborg, no matter how good... Ray Fisher does in this movie and how much I enjoy him. I still like Batman and other characters more than Cyborg. So, it's... He is more, he is like my favorite new character in this. Like at the time for this, uh, taking back to, into the time when this is like made or whatever in the context of the series of the movies, he's my favorite new character in this. But you really, at the same time, my Wonder Woman and them are I still like better. So a cyborg movie is not something I would want to rush out to see, but I think it could work. Like, if you did the ideas and stuff like that that I was kind of spitballing for a follow-up to this as, like, a solo movie, I think a Cyborg movie could work, but I'm not even sure what Cyborg's villains are. Like, does he have any interesting villains? I think there's a character called, like, The Grid. I could be wrong, but I'm not even sure that character's interesting enough for a movie. Really cool Aquaman scene here, but it begs the question of how the hell did Aquaman find him. But then again, he can, like, hear stuff through water and fish and all that, so maybe he communicated with them to, to figure out where they're at. Who knows? Because they are underwater, so. I heard that they're going to do a Captain America 4. This is kind of off like the DC topic, but just to spitball about some other stuff while we're watching this. I heard they're going to do like a Captain America 4. That's interesting to me, like with Anthony Mackie, I guess, as Captain America. Probably Chris Evans in like a small, small, small role if they can get him back in that old age makeup or whatever. I don't honestly think you need a Captain America 4. And if it's going to be with Anthony Mackie as Captain America, just call it Captain America subtitle whatever and just make it his movie. You don't really need like 
Chris Evans and them back in there, really. You don't really... I mean, it doesn't really need to be, like, called Captain America whatever, or Captain America 4. It doesn't need to be treated as another sequel. It can be treated as, like, a new solo movie, but with his, his version of Captain America. That's what I would do, anyway. <coughs> we have Steppenwolf showing back up. Man, Steppenwolf looks like Super Shredder in some, some of these moments. Steppenwolf talking about the anti-life equation. <laughs> One thing I'm like really interested in is like, what would a would a follow up to the Snyder Cut like? Would it mention? I know it obviously have to have dark side, but would it bring in like High Father and all them on New Genesis? I mean, how would that work? Would they be part of the movie? Because from all the ideas I've heard about the Snyder sequels and all that, it just seems like he just wants to focus on dark side and them. Like he doesn't, it doesn't seem like he really wants to bring in like a uh, New Genesis and High Father and all that. And in a way, you kind of don't need them, but at the same time, they're like such a big part of the mythology of dark side that. It is kind of weird not having them, or would be weird not having them. Got 70s rock star Aquaman. If that's what he looks like right there for a second. <laughs> I really like like all this stuff with Steppenwolf communicating with Desaad and stuff like that. It's just really cool and makes the uh, makes the scale feel bigger for the new god stuff. Oh, I got the loyal parademons. Oh, could it be? It's dark side. <laughs> dark side's voice is great in the movie. I love Steppenwolf's reaction. His all his top of his armor like just comes off, and he's just like bowing or whatever. He's just like falling back. Really cool. Just adds a lot of character to what are basically just CGI creations.
Like, how many worlds is it that Steppenwolf owes or whatever, like 50000 Like, Yeah, good luck paying that debt back, buddy. I don't think they ever really state, though, clearly, like, what the reason is that Steppenwolf, um, like, owes all that. Like, what exactly the problem was. I do think that's a little bit of a mistake. I would I would have liked some more background on that. Maybe, like, a New Gods, like, follow-up to this, which, well, of course, that movie's been canceled now, but... Or, or at least the Ava DuVernay like version has been canceled. But uh, I guess you could always fill that stuff in later. What's interesting about this scene right here is in the theatrical cut, we got a scene where it's like a Batman and Wonder Woman arguing where he's like, did Steve Trevor tell you that? And the, all this time, I thought that was a, was probably a Snyder scene, but it's really not. So it makes me, it doesn't really feel like a Whedon thing. So it makes me wonder like why Whedon would put that in there. So maybe he did put that in there deliberately just to make people think that this was a Snyder movie, the theatrical cut, I mean. By adding stuff in there that he would think that people would just automatically assume was a Snyder thing when it's really not. That could be it. And the scene wasn't bad or anything, but but I don't miss it here. It's, it's not needed. I like that this whole history lesson thing right here. This is neat. Interesting thing about Cyborg, I mean, as a character, he exists in this more like comic bookish world and all that. I mean, you would think that they would, somebody would be able to grow like a fake skin or something to like put over his uh, metallic body. Or in some way, shape, or form, he could like a... Uh, use nanotechnology or something to transform his metallic body to look like his human self. I mean, you would think that they could write something like that in, but I guess if you did that, it would take away from, like, the whole Frankenstein type thing or whatever, if he could just look like a regular person. Then he would just be more like a Terminator. <laughs> One of the plot holes here to the story, though, is, like, why didn't the Mother Box, like, hey, if it was on Earth all this time, why did it never activate, like, before Superman ever showed up? That is a good question. But it's just, like, a minor thing. Yeah, a Flash movie with a little bit of Cyborg in it, or a lot of Cyborg in it, would be, would be fun. I'm trying to remember, does this chapter, like, does it end with them bringing Superman back, or does it go through that part of the story, or of the movie? I cannot remember for the life of me. Because we're almost there. We don't get the scene here as well where Batman's like talking to Alfred like uh, Superman was more human than me or whatever. 
he lived in this world, the team needs Clark and all that. We don't get that in here either, which wouldn't make sense in this version because it's like, well, you didn't really know Superman personally, so why the hell is that there? <laughs> So, yeah, that, that doesn't need to be here. This hologram of Superman, whatever, like right here standing, is really cool, projected by Cyborg. A lot of people, when they saw the trailer to it and stuff like that, thought, hey, is that Supergirl? But no, it's Superman. <laughs> Comes Martha. I like, I've warmed up to Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I think she's good. She's fine. But she, this Lois Lane's more of a bit basic. Like any, like I've said before, anytime, usually when she tries to sound like tougher and more ballsy, like the Marco Kidder version, it just kind of falls flat. Way better than the Lois Lane from Superman Returns, though. Kate Bosworth was terrible. Way miscasted. She looked like a little girl. Diane Lane still looks hot for, like, an older woman. But, of course, they've deliberately tried to make her look even older. Like, she still looks pretty hot for, like, a grandma looking woman. Of course, if you're watching this with, along with me with the commentary and stuff, you probably already know like the big reveal coming up here. It's not really Martha Kent, it's Martian Manhunter. <laughs> Want, like a character I always wanted to see on screen was like Superboy or or John Henry Irons, like uh, the Steel Superman, pretty much wearing the the Iron Man top suit but with a Superman symbol in front with the big hammer. Um, I've always wanted to see that character in live action as well. Like that's one of the reasons I really wanted like a Man of Steel two because I feel like you could have like explored those types of characters like Superboy or John Henry Irons and them. I really thought that you could have like really ex delved into those characters that really haven't been used a lot in a uh, mainstream like big budget Superman movie series. Just kind of unexplored. And hell, bring in crypto, why not? Oh, here it goes, the transformation. I like that they got like Colonel Swanwick or whatever, or Swangwick, however you say it, as a Martian Manhunter. It's a good idea for a twist and to bring it in there, and I think the actor does a good job. I think the actual Martian character, though, is a little over-stylized. I think he looks good, though, but I don't think he looks great. Uh, I used to thought, think he, I used to, uh, uh, I gotta spit it out. I used to think he looked great when I first watched it. Watching it now, I just kind of think he looks good. I do think he's a little over-stylized for the movie. I would have expected something maybe a little more low-key for a uh, Snyder film. But at the same time, I think he looks fine. And I like the actor doing it, so 
I enjoy the character in this movie, but it does present plot holes of why the hell didn't he help out Superman or Batman or them in the Doomsday fight in the uh, Batman vs. Superman. So it does present some plot holes, but uh, at the same time, this isn't Martian Manhunter's movie, so I'm willing to let a lot of that go because he's not he's not meant to be like a main, main character here. He's somebody that would become important in like a Justice League 2, so then they would have to add in stuff to like kind of explain from his point of view why the hell he didn't do so-and-so or such-and-such in the, then the movies prior. When it would he would be more of a prominent character and it would be time for his story. Here, it annoys me a little bit, but at the same time, it's not really his movie. We're already on chapter 5. Yep, chapter 5, All the King's Horses. Well, thank you guys for watching, or listening, and I will see you again with chapter 5 probably pretty soon because we're almost done. I believe there's only 6 chapters for the movie, so that's got 4 down, so we're down to 2, plus the epilogue, which I'll probably just wrap the epilogue up in chapter 6. So, thank you guys for watching. Well, I'm listening. I keep getting it confused. Well, thank you guys for listening along with me. And if you've been following me along with all these videos, then God bless you. And I'll see you again with the next one.